Thanks again for joining me as we begin a new week, a new week in the Word of God as, as, as we continue to look at, at men and women of Scripture, people that, that we can certainly learn from. Uh, this week we're looking at John, the great forerunner for our Lord, a man that we're told was coming as we uh, looked at last week from Malachi's prophecy in chapter 4. And John, unusual in many ways, but certainly effective in his mission to prepare the way for Christ. And in John, we're going to see courage. We're going to see boldness. We'll see humility as he, as he sees his place in God's plan and really does everything within his power to, to point people to Christ. So I want to begin really his story in the moments before he arrives on the scene. I want to look at his dad, Zechariah. He was a priest who was married to a woman named Elizabeth. Well, Zechariah and Elizabeth came from the lineage of Aaron. Zechariah was a righteous man, a faithful servant of God. Zechariah and Elizabeth had, had been unable to have children in that day that would have been a disgrace and shameful, especially to the woman. And no doubt they had prayed for a child for, for many years, but, but now they're old. And, and when you consider their, their names, this is kind of interesting, Zechariah and Elizabeth, there's, there's certainly significance, I, I think, as names in the Bible certainly carry significance. The, the name Zachariah was given by his, that was given by his parents means Jehovah remembers. Uh, the name Elizabeth means the oath of God. So when you put those names together, I, I think the significance is rather obvious as we, we read what is about to take place here in Luke chapter 1. So if you have your Bible, let's go ahead and turn over there. You know, in our reading this morning, I want to cover down to about verse 25, but I just couldn't stop the reading there, and, and you'll see why. We're, we're going to read down to verse 38. In a couple of weeks, we're going to spend some time uh, with verses 26 through 38, but I just wanted to include it in our reading as it deals with our Messiah. Uh, so let's read this uh, text together. Let's take it in, and, and, and I want really to make a couple of simple points for us to, to carry with us uh, today. So thank you again for joining Luke chapter 1, let's begin reading there in verse 1. The Bible says, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile an account of the things accomplished among us, just as they were handed down to us by those from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. It seemed fitting for me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, to write it out for you in consecutive order, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you've been taught. Verse 5 says, In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zacharias. Uh, the division of, of Abijah. And he, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. They were both advanced in years. Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw the angel. Fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him, the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this for certain? For I am an old man, and my, my wife is advanced in, in, in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. And behold, you should be silent and unable to speak until the day when, the things, when these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which be fulfilled in their proper time. The people were waiting for Zacharias and were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision of the temple, and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And the days of his priestly service were ended, he went back home. After these days, Elizabeth, his wife, became pregnant. She kept herself in seclusion for five months, saying, This is the way the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked with favor upon me to take away my disgrace among men. Verse 26 says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the sons of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. 
And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you, shall name, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy Child should be called the Son of God. And behold, even your Elizabeth, even your relative Elizabeth, has also conceived a son at her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed uh, from her. So we're going to spend all of our time here in the first 25 verses. But you see now why uh, I wanted to keep reading at verse 26. Uh, this, no doubt, in our reading, was a special day for Zacharias for, for more than one reason. Uh, this was the day his lot was called to do the service within the holy place, the burning of incense. The honor of offering this incense was a big deal for an ordinary priest. No, no priest was allowed to do this more than once, and some were, were never granted the opportunity, the Mishnah tells us. So this was a special day for this priest. And it's here as we read that the angel appears. I want to go back, and I just want us to listen to the angel of the Lord again. He says, but the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. Can you imagine the look on Zacharias' face? No doubt in disbelief. No, no doubt this had been in their prayer for years and years and years, but now they're old. And physically, it would be impossible for this to happen. In verse 18, he says to the angel, listen, I'm old and, and my wife is advanced in years, a polite way of saying she's old too. You know, we see the doubt in Zechariah. It, it, it's hard to get for me to be too judgmental. This is really something. He says, verse 18, how will I know for sure? And the angel Gabriel, he says, it's I who stands in the presence of God, and I've been sent to bring you uh, this good news. God literally, he shuts Zechariah up as a result of his doubting, his disbelief. So he can't speak the good news. So he's making signs to communicate this. And sure enough, Elizabeth becomes pregnant. You know, I think there's a number of ways for us to apply this this morning, brethren. Let me share you just with you how, how it hit me. With God, nothing is impossible. You know, it says that in verse 37, our reading for nothing will be impossible with God. I think we need to take that in. You know, me and you, yeah, we have our limitations, no doubt, or most familiar with that truth, but not with God. Nothing is impossible with God. You know, not having a child, no doubt, had been tough for these two. There's no doubt about that. And I'm sure at some point, they made some peace with their reality. From their perspective, they had prayed for years, but, but God had said no. But the angel appears, in God's perfect time, and he tells Zacharias, your prayer or your petition has been answered. You're going to have a son, and his name's going to be John. And how about this? He won't be just any child. Let's do the scriptures. Many, he said, are going to rejoice at his birth. He's going to be great. He's going to be a vessel for God. He'll, he'll be consecrated for God's service. No wine or strong drink. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, even in the womb. He's going to be a prophet of God. He's going to go on in the spirit of Elijah. Remember Malachi chapter 4, at verse 5. And, and he'll be the forerunner to the Messiah, just as Malachi had prophesied. He's going to turn the hearts of men. He's going to prepare the people for Jesus. Let me say it again. Nothing is impossible with God. You know, no doubt, we'll all apply this a little differently depending on the circumstances currently in our lives. But, but here's what I'm going You know, I, I, I know so many of us live with the disappointment and the heartache of loved ones who, who may have never come to Christ on, on his terms. Some who did and have since 
left the Lord for, for the world. And I know for so many of you, you, you've been praying for a long time and nothing seems to happen. In, in fact, it seems as though things maybe have gotten worse. It's beginning to look like maybe even an impossibility that our loved one's hearts could ever soften and come back to the Lord. And you've been praying for a long time. And maybe you've began to think, maybe God's not listening. I'll ask you, was God listening to Zacharias and Elizabeth? You know, I'm sure in the midst of those years, they, they had their doubts. Here's my point. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of how grim it looks, I want you to remember who you're praying to. And as you consider the God that you're praying to, the idea that nothing's impossible with him, don't stop praying. In regards to our loved ones who've gone astray, or maybe those who've never obeyed the gospel, I would encourage you, keep praying. Pray for their hearts to soften. Let's pray for God's providence to provide that right moment to speak truth to their hearts. Let's pray that God would give them time to make their lives right, to turn back to God. Nothing is impossible with God. I, I think about the early church as, as Peter is arrested, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they, and they prayed. God answered their prayers. Really, we serve the same God. And nothing's impossible with him. And certainly we pray in his will. And certainly we don't always understand or, or, or get the answer that God has given us. And certainly our timetable is far different than God's perfect timetable. And certainly we need to have peace with that. We need to have faith with all of that. But let's never forget that we pray to a most powerful God. With him, all things are possible. So don't stop praying. You know, God hadn't spoke directly to the people for some 400 years, but here we are. John is coming. And he's going to prepare the way for Jesus who's coming as well. Repent, he's going to say. One greater than I is coming, he's going to say. And many will repent. Interestingly enough, the name John means grace of God. I'm excited about this week. Brethren, let's grow this week. Let's get stronger this week. Let's, uh, let's, let's make a commitment to be in God's word every single day this week. And then certainly let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful for the day that, that you are blessing us with. Father, we pray that you would strengthen us this week, that, that our hearts would be humble, that they would be soft, and that we would allow your word to penetrate it. Father, as we look at your servant, John, Father, may we take the things that, that characterized him, that made him so special and so effective, and that we take those things and, and make them a part of us. Father, we're mindful of those at this time who are hurting. Father, we, we especially right now, we, we, we want you to be with the five for family, Father, is. And they're in this waiting period. It is um, just a very difficult situation with everything going on. We ask that you be with our sister Betty, that you would give her comfort, that you would give her some peace. That, Father, we just ask you to bless that good family. Father, we ask you to be with our sister Rachel today as she has cataract surgery. Bless her in that. And Father, we just ask you to continue to be with all of us. We are struggling in many ways at the moment all that's going on, but we are so thankful that you have answered our prayers, that you continue to provide a way for us to worship you in spirit and truth. And Father, we pray that you're pleased with our efforts. And Father, we ask that you would continue to bless us as you have in the past. Be with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.